ITN. Welcome home. So now I've gotten this and I've dialed star four five nine star five hash. And I found a code when I popped the lid under one of these thingies. And then I got instant airtime and data. This one was airtime. This one was data. Mm -hmm. So that glorious thing happened. But guess what? For both of them, I was entered into the draw. Entered into the draw means what? That the possibility of me getting 35,000 shillings towards school fees is great. Four people every week winning because we bought Kiwi. It could be you. But where are you? Mm -hmm. Are you buying Kiwi? So that it can be you. So come January, whatever happens with selection, you can step up and shine because your school fees has been what? Sorted. Hey. If you're thinking about, oh, you know, the money that I have is for school fees, go buy Kiwi, win school fees, and then take that money, go to Nakuru. Una Nakuru? Mm. Una enda mm -hmm. Pass Nakuru, pass Ngata Farm, go. As you get to Salga, mm. where the cops usually are, yes, yes. before you start now the mm -hmm. incline, there at Salga, mm. to the right, you drive in about 300 meters or walk. Mm. 300 meters you, you can, can walk, right? New development coming up there. Tell me about it. Piece of land, mm. big one, subdivided into one eighth plots, and they're selling them for lovely developments. Mm. Okay, so it's called Delight Nakuru. Yeah. It's in Salga. Salga is just about twenty minutes from Nakuru town, mm. Nakuru city. It's within the city. Okay, three hundred meters to the right of the road. This brand new swanky development that's coming up, Delight Nakuru. And they're saying, you know what, just grab your one eighth of an acre today, 799,000, you know. And if you are among the first 50, because you've heard it this morning on Spice FM, it comes down from 799 to 750. Wow. Just by listening to us. Mm. 50, down. 50K. 750,000 bob. There's a payment plan. So once you put in a deposit of 80,000 shillings, you can pay the balance within 30 days. Mm. Bill? Or you can actually go and discuss and have a conversation with them and tell them, you know what, I'd like a longer repayment period. And they say, yeah, 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 we can discuss. Put in a deposit of X amount of money, up to 12 months installment repayments, we can do this. There's a new big development that will be coming up there, flat land, beautiful. You have views of, um, you know, that incline as you climb into mm. Sachangwan and into Molo. And you can also see Rongai. You can see, ah, beautiful. <laughs> Imagine My you. friend. See this, you know the place. I can actually see it as you're talking. Mm? The road winds Kidogo. Kido mm. They went to that Shangan one place. Mm. I can never get that name. Sachang one. Right. See, see, I told them. Yes. Get <laughs> <laughs> so just before you start now going up mm -hmm. at the Salga shopping mm -hmm. center down here. Mm. Remember, it's usually a flat it's as you flat, approach that Salga. That thing is straight. Yeah. But you know, actually, you know, there's like a slight incline. You, you don't see it. But it's a slight one. Slight, but it's there. But, and it's also long. Mm. Now, just when you're about to now take that turn as you climb, going towards that such place. Yes. And you mentioned, okay. On your right, yes, there's like a road. Yes, yeah, that's the road you follow. Mm. Three hundred meters mm -hmm. off the road, mm. you go in there. Mm. This new development will have very many new neighbors. Plus, also public amenities that have been set aside. These are going to be for public amenities. Can the community can decide? We want to have a police post here, chief's mm. office, a kindergarten, shops. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's a free country. After all, you bought it. Yes. It's yours. <laughs> 799 Bob. Now, there are site visits uh, every Wednesday. 1,000 shillings. Bob. Uh, Bob's. Uh, site visits on Wednesday and Saturday. Vehicles departing can come at 7 a.m. Or if you're at Nakuru, meet at Westgate, Westside Mall at 8.30 a.m. SMS the word Nakuru to 20321. Nakuru, send that to 20321. They'll get back to you. They'll give you more details. They'll tell you. Ah, in fact, Eric Ata kuna kitu Eric kuambia. Ile kitu kuambia. Kwa lwa mambo ni huo. Wacha tu kuambia. Yeah. City. Yes. Don't give us the proverb yet. We are waiting for our guests to arrive. Yes. And uh, when they come, they'll come and join us. What we'll be discussing is what is also on the standard this morning. All right. right? This one. What root of Raila proposals on law mean to the Hasoras. It's on page four. Ndu, mm -hmm. you want to start there? Okay, so some of the proposals. Less, less travel by government officials. Yes. An increase in top executive offices. Reduction in fuel prices. Collapse of government institutions. Increase of allocations to the counties. 
an audit of last year's presidential elections, whereas the report to the dialogue team has been received with heavy undertones. A peek inside shows elaborate plans to trim government spending and enhance funding to counties um, for development. Okay, now they want uh, a radical. They want radical austerity measures to ease Kenya's burden. So some of the key recommendations would generally impact state operations, apart from creation of the office of the official opposition leader and two deputies. Mm. That could open a new spending front from the exchequer. A bulk of the recommendations are geared at tightening the purse. All right. The committee recommended reduced travel by government officials. I would like to know by how much. Expansion of the executive, reduction of fuel prices, collapse of government institutions, increase of allocation to the counties, and an audit of last year's presidential election. That seems to still be... Um, a major bone of contention. Mm. If the proposals are fully implemented, government officials with a pension for traveling and taking allowances will be forced to reduce their travel budget by, there it goes, 50%. Yes, okay? yes. The committee co-chaired by National Assembly Majority Leader Kimani Shungwa and WIPA Leader Kalonzo Musyoka wants the Salaries and Remuneration Commission to reduce the daily subsistence allowance per diem for public office officials by 30%. So now you're asking, how will all of this then affect the cost of living? I mean, this one looks like a no-brainer, isn't it? That if you see that the money that officials are using for travel reduces by 50%, the thought then is that you have a little bit more money left to do other things with. Other things like that what? Substantial. Like buying nyanya for people. Uh, I don't get nyanya it. Nyanya is three, three times more expensive. That is, according to this, that's what they say. Let's cut back spending. Because the thought of cutting back spending means that you have a little bit more to do something else with Nispa. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. In tightening the belt on government expenditure, the committee recommended that all state and public officers travel in economic in economy class for flights mm. or m for of not more than four hours. So all this business of you are going from here to Dar es Salaam and you on first class, stop it. Uh, that uh, you're going from here to Dubai, it's four hours and thirty minutes. You don't need to go on. You're going from here, mm -hmm. coach, to, to Joburg, going from here to Joburg, it's four hours. It is four hours. Yes. You don't need to go. You're going from here to Addis Ababa, it is two hours. You don't Juba. need to fly a first class. Fly coach like the rest of of, of everybody. All right. So who's going to do this now? Who's going to fly coach? Eh. <laughs> government and officials which does, one? that's a good question does that article in any way shape or form talk about the per diems that people are paid when they travel mm. yes because they said now that they want to speak to the salaries and remuneration commission to say that you know people's allowances for public officials should be reduced by 30 percent so if you are going with you know a thousand shillings you will now be going with uh, 600 or 700 it's okay. a katwa that's a proposal. Mm -hmm. That's a proposal that they want to now recommend it to the SRC. But the question that uh, do they also deal the question of why is it that we are reading that our public officials travel so much? Must they travel so much? This is a good question. So That's now they're also talking about reduction of travel by fifty percent. So if in a month you were taking f six trips. You now look at the one and say, which one is very important? You will now remove three. I assume mm -hmm. that travel is important. That's where I'm coming from. And okay. I'm saying, mm -hmm. are we simply going to say reduce by 50%? Or are we going to rationally look at why people need to travel? Because the why, if you answer the why, then you may find you don't need to travel at all. You would luckily have a Zoom call. This is true. And I think it is on that premise that this mm. suggestion was made that perhaps they thought there was some kind of frivolous activity when it came to travel. That anytime that somebody says, There's a meeting in Canada, okay, how many of us are going? 21 people will jump up and start traveling everywhere. No. Is it necessary that you go? Oh, we needed to discuss. Can you discuss it? After all, COVID proved to us that presidents of nations can meet over important matters virtually. It happened. And they did. And they did. And there were resolutions Business that were arrived. Done. Yes. Resolutions were arrived at, at at the end of those meetings. It's possible. It can be done. There are things that are absolutely necessary for you to do in person. That is true. But now this came obviously from the fact that they said, okay, you know what? There's a lot of travel and maybe it's not necessary for you to go with an entourage of 25 people. Can you reduce that number? Can you not go at all? Can you reduce the days that you will spend there? Do you have to tack on a week extra for shopping now that you're in the city of Istanbul, for example? You know, Things the way it's like being that. presented, it's as though 
it isn't so much the work it is the travel that is at the center of this discussion mm. because people look for reasons to travel yeah but the key activity is they want to travel they and do. it's not just travel they want to travel comfortably yeah and they also want to consume a per diem mm -hmm. yes yes the per diem is also um, a very encouraging factor here for travel yes so they've talked about the fact that uh, in this committee report, which is expected to be presented to the to Parliament, recommends that the National Cohesion and Integration Commission, the National Gender and Equality Commission, and the Kenya National Human Rights uh, National Commission on Human Rights be merged into one. All right. I, I can see the rights and the gender. I don't see the NCIC. So let me let me just uh, because. Eh. Their and then their mandates be undertaken by the Kenya National Human Rights and, e um, mm. and Equality Commission as established under Article 59 yeah, of the Constitution. Akuna. Uh, Akuna, what city? That. What? Are the crafters of this Constitution understood the importance of this separation of powers that you deal with specific issues. Then mm. someone is coming along and saying, make this mashakura. So that it is just... <laughs> oh, rishi, rishi. Yeah. Actually, yeah. <laughs> the constitution created one commission for rights and gender and equality. Yes. And then they said parliament could then review and see whether there's a way you can split this. Mm. Okay? Because that was said, you know, the craft of the, of the constitution are looking for jobs for their cronies and saying, you know, if you separate them, then two commissions, More then you have four two commissions, commissioners, CEOs, and everything else. Initially, it was one. Under equality, Article 59. Gender course. and Equality, Human Rights, Gender and Equality Commission is one. If you remarge them, yeah. It, When's the last time you heard about this Equality Commission anyway? Eric, it can be one, it can even be a half. Mm. The point I'm trying to make is, uh, eh. if you want to confuse and lose things, eh make this thing a monolith start creating things so things. there are very many things inside it so you're never really quite sure what it is and which is where this one you're clear you know that's where you go for this that's where you go for this that's mm. where you get this mm. that is the the, the 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 logic behind what we call specialization mm -hmm. because someone could say but once a doctor is trained they can just treat you yes they can why do you have specialties then why do you have sub specialities it is that same logic that in my mind leads to this separation mm. that is mine but at the separated then it brought together again yeah. ah no they're not quite no. sure what's going to happen to the staff of these three commissions mm. that's the uh, national human rights the ncic and the ngc mm. but they're saying that they would know this by the end of one year and this is if after yeah. if parliament if then parliament agrees has this, agreed to this these ideas yes i don't agree with that idea mm. there's several more recommendations that yeah. are under all of this for like example very very many they've also recommended that the national and county governments adopt the zero based budgeting approach in enhancing accountability rapidly reduce wastage of public funds and address the challenge of incremental budgeting mm. okay they've also said it is time to freeze the establishment of new state corporations. They recommended that the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum, in liaison with the National Treasury, reduce, now? reduce the road maintenance levy by 5 from 18 to 13 and the anti-adulteration levy from 18 to 15, thus reducing by 3 shillings. So that's another one. Reduce the cost of fuel. Some of the drop by 8 bob. Yes, because now you've reduced the amounts that you charge on levies. But you're levies. going for the levy that maintains roads. Road. Yes. And, and you're going for sure the levy. Make sure that your fuel is pure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Surely. Meanwhile, there's this whole tax thing that you could have thought about. Perhaps we can reduce it here, but no. No, no, no. That one is tax. That's not. It's tax. No, 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 that is tax. <laughs> yeah, so now when a road is not done, you will be told what? But Look, <laughs> if, if they really wanted to simplify this thing, why don't they merge Nairobi... Uh, with Machakos. Yes, no, that one they can do, but yeah. Kenyatta International Conference Center with Nairobi National Park. <laughs> so, so, so that it just becomes one thing. Mm. Only, I mean, come on. Did they have nothing else to do? There may be more of these recommendations that we're getting. They had a lot to do. It took them long. But it took them long. To come to this. Sleepless many, nights. Many you have something that is working, then you muddle with it, and then you're telling us, they were put this here, the change this here. Oil. Mm. They had Kuroboi. And it would appear as though there is a bee in your bonnet, CT. There are many more recommendations here that would add yet another one.
I don't know if you're ready. No, I do not wish to hear any of this. It's just being negative. <laughs> Just, was just negative. Dr. Duncan Ojoang is a member of the Kenya Kwanza Dialogue Committee technical team. He's in the studio. Uh, Jeremiah Kioni, who is the head of the legal and technical team of Azimio, uh, is somewhere behind. He'll be joining us hopefully in good time. Dr. Ojoang, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Habari <laughs> Salam, habarienu. Took of war. City is not too happy, but you know, the rest <laughs> of us are all right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, Dr. John, you are a member of the technical team mm. that was sort of advising the Kenya Kwanza team on what is right, you know, in terms of this uh, national dialogue conversation, mm. right? Mm. And you advise them to come up with this. With what? You what have been this, this, this report that they released. Are you happy with the report? Yeah, I'm happy with the report. Mm -hmm. uh, it has exceeded my expectation. <laughs> uh, and so, of course... You, did, you didn't have a bar anywhere, did you? As, as, you had not even raised the bar. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, 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 we did. I don't know whether what, what, the, what people expected, but at least yeah. we have a report. Yes. A uh, bipartisan report for yes. that. Yes. Uh, the issue that preoccupied our time and concerned our effort is cost of living. It you did. can see several posterity measures. Yes. Uh, you know, the issue of institutionalization of our politics. Yes. Uh, because, um, you know, you hear cheap things like, oh, they have created a position for the leader of opposition. Now, the leader opposition position is created so that rather than doing what they are doing very well in the street, mm. it is institutionalized so that they can protect. Go to the streets as an institution. Uh, they can protect people mm. uh, in parliament and through structure and institutions. So how is that proposal not pro-people? That hey, proposal is BBI. Wh wh why are you... The BBI by whatever name, you know I'm not hanged up with, uh, with acronyms. Uh, because I think Kenya has a longer history than BBI. There was life, there was this discussion before BBI, mm. but, but uh, we, 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 we don't just pigeonhole and say and, 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 and use labels. Let us discuss the content. Yes. Uh, is Raila and opposition pro people when they are in the street without institution to fight for the people? Or if the institution is created so that they can uh, check the executive and fight for the people. How is that not pro people? Dr. Joel, Dr. Harry, mm. are you suggesting that the only way you can fight for people is if you have an institution behind you? E e effectively, uh, yes, you can, because some of these things were not sustainable. And, and you know, see, I'm, 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 I'm tired of people who's the closest they have come to problem of cost of living or human right is being served wrong brand of wine. They, they maybe ask for red wine, they were given white wine. That is the closest they have come to this problem. We are talking of people in Kibera who could not go to school because people were picketing. People in Madari, people in Nyalenda, children who saw uh, all the brutality and the tear gas and could not even go to school. This report is for peace. Then Show here us. come the middle class whose only relation to this issue is because they were served wrong brand of wine. Mm. All of a sudden talking as if they have walked those people's shoes. Mm. Mm. It, it breaks my heart. Mm. Mm. Your heart is fragile, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You better have a fragile heart too. <laughs> Dr. Because, I, I mean, Dr. Huh? Let's talk about the cost of living. <laughs> yes. The measures that have been proposed to address the cost of living. Yes. Why were the people that you've talked about, Nyalenda, Kibera, Huruma, Madare, why were they participating in the demonstrations? Cost of living, was that, was, was it a legitimate concern? If there is a... Was it? It was main. It was part of. It was a. It was concern. a legitimate concern. Yes. Okay. Uh, how has this been addressed? How has this been addressed? Yeah. Uh, less traveling. Uh, how has this been addressed? Uh, explain. So, so if Kimani Ishongo does not travel as as often as he was traveling, mm. or any that of the money is cut from their budget, and then 
then that money mm. is not used for traveling. So all the state agencies mm. and ministry traveling budget has been cut mm. by, I think, 50%? Yes. yes. So that m is less money mm. being used for traveling. Okay. Uh, zero sum budget. Co now connect that mm. to cost of living, cost of wonga. Yes, so if or the cost if of nyanya or cost of 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 fish. Yeah. Uh so if there there is less travel, there is more money, there is less borrowing. Yeah, there's less borrowing, there is more money in the coffer that can do good things, including subsidizing fertilizers and production. So, so I, I, I don't see uh, that there's very clear uh, nexus between the two. Now, look right. at the zero-sum budget. Okay. Mrs. Nyakango came and said, uh, the way, generally people just come with budget, but not every spending is justified. Yeah. So they said, we are going to have zero-sum budget where you don't begin from, this is what I had last year. You begin from building block. I have three employees. This is how much they make. Okay, put it down here. Isn't that going to cut corruption and opportunity to, to, to exaggerate the budget? Remember the idea that uh, has been well articulated that corruption is budgeted for, has been taken care of by the zero-sum budget. Uh, plus any other measure, including... So how does that... I still want to get how that brings down the cost of basic goods and commodities. I, I mean, I, 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 I directly, you know, uh, so so so, the sharpest, so, so you so. so the 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 if there is less corruption in budgeting, mm. if you know our issue and part of our cost of living is governance issue. It's very expensive the way we are governed. It is very expensive, the, the, the type of salary, the amount of salary that is going to, to, to fund uh, this thing. The government operates in very expensive way. That is generally uh, part of cost of living. So if this is now checked, mm. isn't there more money? And uh, more money means mm. more good things for Kenyans. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> like what you know it, you know when, when you say there is more money where is this more money coming from look if if our budget for this year mm -hmm. this one that we are now running yeah, in, yeah. if it was not 3.6 trillion shillings it was 3.3 trillion shillings mm -hmm. would that would there be more money y yes because we have to meet that budget but would there be more money there, there will be more money for uh -huh. other important things you, you know, basic things does not have to have Dr. basic. Joan, basically, uh -huh. how? If mm -hmm. if you say yeah. our budget this year is 3.6 trillion shillings, in the next year, from July next year, yeah. we are going to have a zero-sum budget. Yes. We are going to cut this travel. Yeah. So if you cut this travel by 50%, our O&M is one that's about 300 billion shillings. Yeah. So let's bring it out to 150 billion shillings. Okay? So our zero-sum budget will be, we are not starting from 3.6 going upwards. We shall look you, back. You are building for base, every right? yes, yes. every coin. So let's bring it down to three point six trillion shillings, from three point six to three point three trillion shillings. Mm -hmm. Show me where there is more money. I, 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 where is there more money? Because you've just yeah no, the, the, budgeted well, well, for less. Yeah, okay, but, uh, it might be hard to deal with your hypothesis mm. uh, because there is two uh, errors in it. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, one, mm. you are bringing it as if it is factual. Uh, that you know that it will be the, the uh, amount uh, number two. So it's an hypothesis it's, it's, it's of, of future. It's completely and, and hypothetical. And I don't want to follow you to the roots because what, what, what is not hypothetical mm. is this year's budget. It is 3.6 trillion. There, there are some th of the things that take effect immediately. Mm -hmm. There's this traveling zero sum that reduces by 50 percent yes there's and per diems that reduce by 30 percent by 30 percent okay, okay so what we are trying to do is yeah. look for the link between this money that will be saved so it's based on a principle even if it is not a hundred thousand shillings just use that as an idea that a hundred thousand shillings give or take across 20 people that come from state corporations who would ordinarily travel and you take 30% from this 100,000 shillings times 20 people, that is 600,000 shillings. Is it not that you have saved? That you have saved, yes. Okay. Yes. 
the link between that 600,000 shillings and where and what it will be applied to that then means that the person who goes to their duka to buy maize meal will have an easier time in purchasing. That's the link we're trying to get. Because we are saying that these measures that are being suggested have a direct impact on the cost of living. It is that link that we are looking for to see mm. how it will be mm. realized. Yeah, maybe that will, uh, and, and you have broken it down very well. Uh, I, I gave, I took it for granted that it will be obvious that if government saves money, mm. if government tighten their belt, then obviously there is more money here mm. to do good things. Uh, those good things are things that government supply that we cannot supply But it doesn't ourselves. make it cheaper. Let's put it in context in a maybe an easier thing to understand. If in a home there is one person working and all of the responsibilities are on the shoulder of this one salary, right? Mm. Now, we've seen that they used to go on holiday. They don't go on holiday anymore. So the mm. 20,000 shillings you would use for holiday, mm. we bring it here. Mm. Right, we've gone to a cheaper school, we save some money. Does that now mean that the price of what I will go and buy in the supermarket is cheaper? It doesn't, it, it means there is more, more money available, but it doesn't mean that the cost of purchase or the cost of survival has come down. You, you, you know, we are looking <laughs> at it at a uh, micro level. Which we uh, must. I'm looking at it at macro level. Mm. The government cannot say uh, how to address cost of living now means uh, people should eat more vegetable and ugali because it's cheap. Th that is not what the government does. <laughs> and the, 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 pres the underlying presumption in your argument mm. is that you, 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 you argue as if you don't, uh, you, you don't appreciate mm. that we are in a... Uh, uh, a capitalistic society mm -hmm. where the, the, the force of the market takes their natural course. That one is already packed here as a principle. So we are not in a communist where the government is going to say from today, uh, the price of rice is going to be this much, uh, the price of, uh, of, of vegetable. They do things in terms of environment, in terms of supporting the economy, things that an individual cannot do, then the rest follows. Okay. So I think that so then it's meant is, to be a catalyst. Uh, then I think that is the the, 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 the source of disappointment. Because mm -hmm. if you thought the report was going to come and say, from today henceforth, three nyanyas is ten bob. No, no, no. <laughs> that would have been illegal. Absolutely. Come on. <laughs> Let's take a break. It's <laughs> such <laughs> From tomorrow to today, how much city is three nyanyas? It's, it's gone up by, it's gone up by three hundred percent. He's saying it's gentle going down, but here it's gone uh, three times. It's triple. It, it will have been easier to meet Kioni. Hey, <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, now that, I was ready for you. Now that <laughs> government officers will be flying uh, economy, economy, they better think of. Uh, in fact, now that we're flying economy, there's a way in which it can actually <laughs> help, right? Economy class entertainment. Keep yourself entertained now that you're going to step it down a little bit. We all love a holiday, but with a long flight ahead, you need plenty to keep you entertained. Once you see the endless entertainment on board Emirates, we you might wish your flight was just a little bit longer. Imagine this, you get on board, you sit back, you relax, and you choose from up to 5,000 channels. Yes, you heard that right. It with the latest blockbuster outs of Hollywood, a comedy box set, or even live sports. And you can watch it all on the biggest screens in the sky. You get more, so much more in Emirates economy. Find out more at emirates.com. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Festive season, see more on Star Times. Enjoy four fantastic new channels to kick off the holiday spirit. Hey kids, jump on board for more laughter and adventure on Boeing. Wow, amazing. Explore the wonders of the world on the Discovery Channel. You'll be at the edge of your seat with the gripping intrigue of true crime stories on the ID Channel. Get some cake and a party hat as you enjoy live out loud lifestyle shows on fascinating families and heartwarming transformations on TLC. Renew your subscription today. Watch the big match, catch up on the news, enjoy our new drama series Pink Ladies and the latest movies. Sing along to your favorite tunes to keep the good times rolling. See more, be more, do more. Star Times. Enjoy digital life.
Fresh Deal. Now with new InfiniFresh technology, antibacterial power with 48 hour protection, and long lasting freshness. Nivea Fresh Deal. Feel fresh in every moment. Try new Nivea Fresh Sensation Deal. Our freshest fragrance with 72 hour antiperspirant protection. Ethan! Mommy! Mommy! Ethan! From the depths of heartache to the heights of happiness, lives intertwine in ways you never imagined. That's how I look at it, being the mother of Hymas children. Secrets are revealed, alliances are tested. It was your husband who killed my daughter! Mommy! Mommy! And true love faces its biggest challenges. You know what? This is your fault! I warned you! Love, betrayal and endless suspense thrive in the world of soap operas at KTN Home. Tune in. I saw the killer bride. Y you meet the ghost? With Glovo, you've got the city at your fingertips. Unajisikia kukula kitu different? Order a Glovo. Sopi Mesha, order a Glovo and get it right away. Download Glovo and get anything you want in minutes. Star five one nine mm -hmm. star five five hash to get a ticket to get a ticket meet you all there yes this Saturday yes Billia Bell is the one I'm going for I know Feregola is big mm, however however Billia ay, 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 ay. yes ah uh, she's the one so Doctor Juan yes um, you told us there are measures that will address the cost of living in the medium to the long term. Other measures that have been proposed in this report are to address our politics, yeah. including, for example, the creation of the uh, office of lead of official opposition. Yeah. Prime Minister's office. Mm. What is it for? Um, you know, it's meant to bring political hygiene. Uh, and the political hygiene means that mm. uh, we should have clear institutions that uh, the leader of opposition should be able to even have shadow cabinet to check the government so that the two sides can now work for the people. And uh, you'll rather do that in, the, in parliament and in an institution than doing it in the street. And so I think it is uh, institutionalizing our good manners, uh, let the opposition check the executive, uh, let us talk of inclusivity uh, because you know very well that we live in a country that is uh, uh, multi-ethnic. So let us have these institutions so that uh, we can represent each other better. So how uh, does, for example, having, we'll come to the Prime Minister because that was my initial question, but now that you've gone into lead of opposition, how does that function? The leader of opposition will be elected by the minority coalition in parliament and then they'll become the leader of opposition. Will they be a member of parliament? What, how will that help? How's that, how does that help anything? How does that help? How is that different from having a minority leader in the National Assembly? 
Uh, it's the stature and the gravitas of the <coughs> office. Mm. Uh, yes, they will not be members of parliament because that required a referendum. Uh, but this is going to be a quick fix. Uh, this leader of position, once institutionalized, then uh, they should be able to even come to parliament and uh, talk about alternative uh, budget. Uh, they should be able to come to parliament and address uh the the the, the, uh, the members of parliament and kenyans through parliament so institutionalization rather than informal you know a lot of uh, bad things happen when things are left informal like handshake was informal but when you have institutions then there's less chance of uh of personalization of things there's less chance of uh of 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 informality so right now, everyone knows their role. They are also facilitated to do their role so that they can do it effectively. And, and I think that uh, if you look at our constitution, it's saying Kenya is a, a multi-party state. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, is, that should be depicted from the, how we organize our politics. So if so we have, have an, op an office of opposition leader and, and there are two deputies, deputies, right? Yeah. How does that help our politics again? Are you saying that because you have that office, you are not going to have man to man on the streets? It's an office. And so with that office then, they have a forum uh, and they have uh, researchers. You see, if you are opposition mm. and you're not facilitated to even do your research. So if government come and say, I've built... Uh, a big hospital in Gariza. Mm. You are not able to go to Gariza to verify that is it built, is it worth it? Then you'll be in Nairobi, uh, you'll be in Kibera, you'll be in uh, in in the in in Kamukunji saying mm. bure making without, wild allegations. Yes, without facts. But now you can send your team of researchers because you are in an institution. Yeah. You, they can go there and verify, is this thing on the ground? Is it worth it? So when you are now critiquing, not criticism, but critiquing, then now you have data, now you have details, and in, in, the, in the two, by, when people work better when they know they are being checked. And people work better when they know they are being, uh, that they, they are being, they, 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 somebody who is watching and can get uh, more information. So people have the right to information, and that right to information should be able to come from the government and from the opposition. And then people can make their decision. Uh, how else? So just going to the street without data, without information, uh, and shooting from the hip. Is, is one way of doing it. But I think a better way of doing it is to institutionalize this institution mm. so that they can help Kenya with governance. Dr. Ari, your principal in Kenya Kwanzaa, the president, was completely against BBI and he had reduced it into this is creating offices for cronies. Uh, How would you respond today uh, if people said the same thing? This is creating offices just for individuals in uh, high political offices. Did, did BBI to, have leader of opposition? I don't think so. So, so that is already showing you uh, the, the different trajectory. BBI did not have leader of opposition. BBI was an executive order. This is a parliamentary process. You saw it passed in National Assembly. So it is following the rule of law. It is creating it offices. Is, it is this is the bottom line. You are creating what? an office for I, I prime think, minister, yes. for two deputies, uh, I mean, leader of opposition, two deputies, a prime minister. Who's a prime minister anyway? But, but, but did BBI have leader of opposition? That's yes. the question I'm asking. Was it there? It's in, uh, in parliament. BBI? Yes. Uh, was creating leader of opposition. Leader of minority. Uh, yeah, leader of minority is different from leader of opposition. Because unfortunately, you know, we assume that uh, the president... So here is pr former Prime Minister Raila, who got almost half of the country vote. He's not in parliament, Right. Uh, when he speaks, the authority and the gravitas of what he says will be much far, much different from what Opio Wandai, for example, Mweshimiwa, will say. So the, he must be able to lead his troops 
and governed so that we have institutionalized politics. Uh, otherwise, what did we have uh, instead? We have a situation where people do not speak uh, through institutions and we have very negative politics. You saw what picketing does because when people cannot talk, when people cannot be heard, sometimes they are forced to come to extrajudicial means. Mm. You know how much loss that Mandamano brought to the country. Mm. So now you've avoided it long enough. Now let's come into it. The Prime Minister's office. The, 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 the Prime Minister office uh, or uh, by, uh, Chief Cabinet, right, by whatever name, is already there. There is somebody in the office. But we must institutionalize this. P think of things not in terms of now, but in terms of posterity. Is it a bad thing if we are saying, remember this 2010 constitution ideally came to take powers from the president. That's why it created counties. That's why it created a, a deputy that the president cannot fire. Yeah, and uh, like before the vice president, that is why it removed uh, ministers from being in parliament. Now it has also taken some part, some power from the president by dividing it to prime minister. Uh, we started with a very, uh, you know, a monster of presidency, and the 2010 uh, constitution have tried to tinker with that. And, and create other centers of power so that the presidency do not become larger than life, so that we fight less. Uh, isn't this one of the ways that it has devolved or, or, or removed power from the president? How? But by, the by, president shall appoint the person who will be prime minister based on nothing other than the president's wish. Parliament shall approve the nomination. How is that taking power away from the president? Is this person going to be head of government? How is this helping our politics? Maybe City, are you seeing it? Because I'm uh, not. I mean, our lived experience with mm -hmm. the devolution, I was told that the power of the president was going to reduce. I haven't seen it reducing, not even my one iota. The only thing that I have seen, if this is what you refer to as a reduction of power, mm -hmm. is a situation where the president can be told to jump off and be told to get lost, that sort of thing. But that isn't reducing power. That is giving the Mwanainchi more power to actually say and do what they'd like to do. And remember, presidents in African countries have a tendency you forgetting that they're actually elected. They actually think that it's divine intervention that gives them those jobs. And, and those who don't will try and figure out how they can stay on their jobs for as long as they possibly can. Now, our constitution did not take away power from the president. If you understand it the way as a layman, any constitution that gives power to the people has given the president more powers than even had before. Because if you are elected, then it means that power has been delegated to you by the people. Yes. So this reduction of power story, you, me, I don't get you're it. You're saying like it's a bad thing. Uh, court, how many times have we seen court reverse our presidents? Isn't that uh, a way of devolving powers from the president? It's not devolving. That, my friend, is the perfect way in which the president is assisted. This godlike complex that African presidents like assuming mm. doesn't help anybody. Mm. Okay? That's why it leads that, to coups true. and counter coups. Yeah. But isn't that an innovation of the constitution that we have seen a situation yes. where a president will say one thing. So I'm telling you that, uh, yes, uh, it might not have been perfect, but it has dented at least uh, from what we had. Uh, Dakar, you and I are not in disagreement. Okay. We're not in disagreement. Mm. Yes. So, so the prime minister role here uh, come to be another way of de decentralizing power of the president. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the good doctor here was in school and he studied in English. Look, <laughs> is the prime minister going to be head of government? Usually we see prime ministers are head of government. Is he going to be head of government? Is he going to be above the deputy president? No, I, I think uh, the amendment is saying that uh, he will be doing assignment uh, given by the president, by the president and yeah. the deputy president. Uh, <laughs> the the one that uh, probably Azimio wanted uh, could have required a referendum. Uh, now the uh, back to the bipartisan. 
that was so also, what's the point of creating this office and entrenching it in the constitution if it's a cabinet office like any other of the 23 cabinet offices no if you look at the function of the prime minister there are some functions uh, is everyone even a president is the member of a cabinet yes. but he's first among equal so so no. it's not so much about he's not first among he's the appointing equal. authority yes he's not first among equal. he can fire the others this prime minister how different is he from the minister for health but remember, it has to go through uh, parliament. So All of them do. It, uh, it is an extra layer. And, and to me, uh, the innovation here, guys, the innovation here mm. is that uh, we now have uh, a national leadership that can represent our various regions AKA. and people. So we've created offices for political figures. For people. Yes. For political figures. Uh, no, you you know we have people in mind. You have Raila in mind for this. No, one. not Raila. In mind. You're, you're, you're dividing uh, the uh, line so sharply here. that somebody will think that uh, a there is a politician. Uh, they have different mothers. They have different parents. They have different. Th these are also Kenyans, mm. and the position is not for individual. Actually, and that has been the problem. Actually, no. This is our politics. This is Kenya. We have people in mind when we set our positions. It's not complicated, and there's nothing wrong with it, because politicians have figured out, and the voting public, which is us, have also figured out that we like this idea of our own representing us somewhere with a nice title like prime minister or whatever that is, deputy prime minister. People like those things. To understand it, you only need to look at the period after the problems we had in 2007, 2008. We had so many deputies and primes and presidents and what have you. People seemed happy. It's how we think. The BBI understood this very well. That's why they went about creating all these things. Now, why a referendum would be necessary is that the referendum now people could tell you clearly we don't want it. That is your creation. But so long as we don't have a referendum, we can anecdotally say that that is how people prefer to have the leadership. People want to feel that they are also part of this cake-eating exercise. Mm. And the only way they feel that way is when one of their own has a title. Do you think the concerns having been brought about by the Azimio side are uh, genuine? Do you believe that their concerns have some weight that they've brought? There are certain things that have come out after the report uh, whereby some principals say, well, they're not going to be party to this. They're not going to sign it for one, two, three. Do you think those concerns are valid? Um, there, there are concerns. You see, my, my worry is, uh, is not whether people even reject the report. Is that there is a report that is bipartisan. That uh, those two sides and Kenyans that were not seeing eye to eye held each other's hand and said, let us put this country first and came with a report and sacrificed both sides. In fact, uh, died a little. Now, uh, <laughs> if you look at uh, the, the I, I don't know which is Azimio's side, because it is very hard to have opposition within opposition. Yeah, and, and that is what appears to be, because the Azimio was represented, mm. uh, the leader of delegation signed the report, the leader of delegation has not trashed the report. Mm. So, so uh, if, uh, if a member uh, within Azimio uh, or a, a, a member really, because it's not so much the leadership of Azimio, uh, might not be happy, the right to picket in Article 37 was not torn from the books. They can go and demonstrate. It is an individual right. It's not a group right. But to, 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 to bootstrap and think that, uh, that, that people should just move by your whims uh, look at that mandamano who are in the streets. It was people from my region who are in the streets. Then somebody somewhere who have not seen their relatives hurt, have not seen their relatives demonstrate, uh, come out and say, I reject this. No, that right is there in Article 37. They can hit the road and demonstrate. <laughs> As individuals. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, we are being hypocritical. Uh, when, 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 when Mandamano was called, nobody came from their neighborhoods. Nobody came from their quarters. All of a sudden, they are very clever about 
uh, yet they have not bear the brunt of what demonstration did to the people in Kibera, to the people in Mashimoni, to the people in Madare. To them, it's a lofty idea. It's an ideology. It is like ping pong. You know, they 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 don't they don't. It's not total commitment for some of the region we come from. It's a total commitment because unless this thing was addressed, it was becoming and remaining to be a regional problem. People are called to the street. They demonstrate. Uh, some things happen. People, some people, people take die. advantage. People As, yes, um, people, people, die. people die. People get hurt. Yes. And then when now the, the two sides have buried their hatchet, I've said let us move forward, mm. then you find somebody from ideological perspective, not from total commitment. You know, the, 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 the story where we had... Uh, so, uh, we, we, we had, we, 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 there was a town where there was an advertisement on the shop saying uh, eggs and meat required. Please donate. Then the chicken is telling the cow, why don't we get in here and donate these things to these people? The cow tell the chicken, you know, you will get in and donate your egg and leave. <laughs> to me, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the meat they want. <laughs> it's total sacrifice. So we, we, we also need to call some of this bluff that w w for others, it's academic. Dr. John, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> we'll invite you again, of course, as uh, <laughs> this report is then chewed and and understood by the people. Dr. Duncan Ojuang was a member of the Kenya Kwanzaa Dialogue Committee's technical team. He's been our guest. The Honorable Jeremiah Keone, who's the head and legal head of the technical team of Azimio, was also to join us. He wasn't able to come in. But the conversations continue. Keep it here for more. Coming up in the next hour, we talk about the Hustler Fund.